Since the pandemic started, I've deployed the tactics that we're going to talk about in this video and have increased my salary $50,000 in one year. If I can do this using these tips, so can you. For anyone new here, hi, I'm Janelle. This is Janelle Knows Money. I'm a compensation professional that's obsessed with figuring out how to get you the job, how to get you paid, and then figuring out what do we do with that money. Hit the subscribe button if this sounds interesting to you. I come out with new videos every week. Okay, so let's dive into the first tip for how to increase your salary. The first thing that I did was change jobs frequently. And I know this can be a little bit of a controversial topic. And honestly, if I had a dime for every time a boomer told me not to change jobs because it would look bad on my resume, I would have financial freedom at this point already. And although I agree that you shouldn't change jobs every three to six months and you shouldn't do this three to four times in a row, I do think that there are circumstances from which that you can change jobs frequently and a recruiter, a hiring manager, isn't really going to bat an eye as long as you have a thought out explanation as to why you change jobs. They want to see that you've been mindful about your career trajectory and if it makes sense as to why you switch from one job to the next then I find that people don't really care. I also want to point out that at this point in our lives the economy has changed, the job market has changed, and we have new generations coming into the workforce which means we're going to move throughout our careers a little bit differently than people have in the past and that's okay. The model of getting a job and working at the same place for 30 years doesn't totally work anymore and definitely not from a salary increase standpoint. For example, being in compensation, I know that typically companies on an annual basis for their merit process only budget around like two to three percent, kind of regardless of inflation. On the other hand, if you were to go out and get a new job, change jobs, change industries, you could get as much as a 10% increase. Personally, I have gotten as much as a 20% increase and that's just on salary. That doesn't even account for the additional bonuses that I've received by changing jobs. And the good news here is that the folks that are recruiting are in our generation, so the chances are that they've also changed jobs pretty frequently. So when they're looking at somebody's resume, it's not going to raise a lot of red flags for them. So if you're looking to increase your salary and your income, do what I did and switch jobs. The second thing I did to increase my salary was research salary ranges for jobs in my field and across different industries. I acknowledge that I have an advantage here. I work in compensation, so this is what I do for a living. However, there are different ways that you can do this as well in order to get an accurate understanding of how much you should be paid for a job in your field and in different industries. So here's what I would recommend. Most HR folks will tell you that you can't trust public salary data, aka the information that you find on Glassdoor or salary.com. However, I do think there's some truth to it and there are ways that you can use this data to get a better understanding of what the salary ranges look like for your job and in the industry that you're looking to apply for. So the first thing I would recommend doing is picking a specific title that you want to create a salary range for. The second thing that I would do is look for that title on as many of these public forums as humanly possible. Check Monster, check Glassdoor, Indeed, etc. Anything that you can get your hands on, grab it, list the job title, list the site, and then list the salary range that you got off of that site. When you have a large array of all of these different salary ranges, average them. This is your starting point for figuring out what a salary range is for this job title. And keep in mind that as you're doing your research, some industries pay more than others. So you'll wanna take this into account. If you're interested in working in tech, they typically pay more than you know working at a marketing or advertising agency. It's kind of the industry norms. So once you have this information, so once you've researched online and you have a general range of what this job could be paid, the second thing that I would recommend that you do is talk to people in your field that have the same job title and straight up ask them what they're making. You'd be surprised, but most of the time people are very open and honest about their pay and they'll let you know exactly what they're making or they might even tell you what they've been making in the past or give you a broader large range of what somebody in the job title you're looking to work in makes. You're gonna note all of these data points down in the same worksheet that you're noting down all of your online research data. But the last thing you're gonna to wanna to do that I suggest is talking to as many recruiters as possible. Recruiters might not like me for saying this, but what I end up doing to get a better feel of what somebody is making in a specific title is I apply for as many of that job as I can find. I take as many phone screens as possible. I give them my range and I kind of feel out how that company is compensating folks and I take that in as another data point. And more often than not, they'll end up disclosing what their range is to you as long as you're providing them with some information as well. I would recommend doing this as many times as you need to in order to get a better idea of what somebody in this job should make. And perhaps maybe you'll find your dream job along the way as you're talking to a recruiter and then you've already begun increasing your salary, getting a new job, moving through that process. The third thing that I did to increase my salary $50,000 is tell the recruiter my expectations for my salary upfront. 
I know a lot of folks in the career coaching community will discourage you from doing this and not wanting you to give a number because you don't want to lowball yourself and I totally understand that. However, we've done the research, we've gone through multiple processes of looking online, talking to people in the job title and chatting with other recruiters who are actively recruiting for this job title. So we have a pretty good idea of what somebody in this job should make. And you want to give this number up front so that the recruiter knows exactly where you're coming from and if their budget is not in alignment with what you want and what you know you deserve, then you can move on to another job and you don't have to waste your time talking to the recruiter, going through week-long interview process only to find out that they can't pay you what you're worth. One thing to note here is if you do want to give a salary range instead of a specific number, the bottom number of your salary range should always be the lowest number that you are willing to accept. Don't give them a low number that you would be not okay with accepting because they might give you that number because they're like, oh, it's within the range when really you want more money than that. So a few more tips when you're giving the recruiter your salary expectations. I want you to know that after you give them your range, not only again, do you want to give them the bottom number that you're okay with, but on top of that, give them the range and follow up with, is that within your budget? If they say no, you can ask them what their budget is for the position. This way you get to know whether or not you are in alignment right from the start. And if they say that you're not within budget, you at least know exactly what their budget is. And it's possible that you might be okay with that budget. You might be okay with going down a little bit if it is an opportunity you're super excited about. Another tip is, okay, maybe you come in outside of their budget, but after chatting with the recruiter, they really like you. They might go out of their way to go to the hiring manager, let them know you're the perfect candidate. And then you might even have the hiring manager go back through the requisition process to get the salary range for the position raised even higher so that they can hire you and they can meet your expectations. I've seen it happen before and there's no reason that it couldn't happen for you. A third note, if you let them know what your expectations are, they say it's out of budget and you still really want the job, we have to do a little bit of recovery, right? Because we don't want them to think you're not interested because your salary expectations are outside of the range. So when this has happened to me, what I've typically done is let them know that I understand that compensation isn't just about base salary, that it's about a total compensation package and that that I feel really good about and I feel positive that we could come to a consensus on the total compensation that would make me really happy and excited about the job as well as stay within their budget. If you have any questions about things that you could negotiate, I'll link my eight things besides salary that you didn't know you could negotiate video in the upper right hand corner and you can check that out. Which leads us perfectly into the fourth thing that I did to increase my salary $50,000 in one year, I negotiated. And I didn't just negotiate my base salary, I also negotiated again my total compensation package. Like I mentioned, I do have two videos on my channel you can check out specifically about negotiation. So for this video, I just want to give you a few quick tips that would be helpful as you're negotiating in the offer letter stage. So the first thing that I need you to know about negotiating is from someone who has been an HR professional who's been on the back end of it. Hiring managers and recruiters expect you to negotiate. And the reason I'm telling you that is because negotiation is really scary. It's very hard to do. And by telling you that they expect it, my hope is that that you feel more comfortable doing it because it's not out of the norm for recruiters and hiring managers to negotiate offer letters with candidates. And if they make you feel weird about negotiating, that's a little bit of a red flag to me. If a company isn't open and willing to talking to you about pay and aren't a little bit more transparent about pay, that's just something to take into consideration. And for me personally, I might not even take a job because of that, but that's just my opinion. The second thing that I want you to know about just the negotiation process and just from a back end perspective is that when a job is approved, there's always a salary range associated with it. So they're giving you an offer, say, of $50,000 a year. However, the job was probably approved for $45,000 to $55,000 a year. And so they're giving you the exact middle number as their first offer so that if you negotiate, they have a little leeway on the upper end in order to get you some more money. So that's why it's so important to ask if they're open to negotiation after they give you that first number because they're probably not putting all of the money out on the table immediately because again they're expecting you to negotiate it's very normal to negotiate and so they're thinking you'll come back with maybe 60,000 and they will counter with 55,000 and they'll be happy you're, they're still within budget you'll be happy you got more money and then that way everybody's happy okay and then the third tip that I want to talk about is that even if they meet your salary expectations so say you give them your salary expectations up front like I recommended and then at the end of the interview they do give you what you were expecting they give you that exact number we need to 
to talk about how you can then negotiate from there because sometimes when people get met with what they wanted they feel like they can't negotiate and there isn't room to negotiate but there is you just have to be careful how you bring it up so what I would recommend is letting them know that you're super grateful for the offer you're very excited that they met your expectations however after learning more about the opportunity you feel like your salary expectations have shifted a little bit and now you're looking for X dollars and ask them if they can meet you there sometimes they'll be able to sometimes they can't but again it never hurts to ask the easiest way to get a raise is by asking for more up front again check out my other videos on negotiation advice you can also check out my TikTok, which will be linked below where I talk about negotiation almost every day so the last tip I have for you to increase your salary is to say no frequently if a company couldn't meet my salary expectations I said no and I moved on to another opportunity and it's okay to do that you're allowed to say no at any point in the interview process when you learn and or feel like they're not going to be able to meet your expectations again I've done this both at the phone screen level after I've had that initial conversation with a recruiter and I've done this all the way at the end of the interview process after going through four weeks of interviews getting an offer and in not meeting my expectations and that's okay you're allowed to do that even if they make you feel like you can't at the end of the day you have to be most loyal to yourself and you have to do what is best for you so let me give you an example of how each one of these things went so that you just have a little bit more information about what saying no looks like saying no at the beginning of an interview process after a phone screen can look a couple of different ways one of the ways could be I gave my salary expectations to a recruiter asked if they were in budget asked if it's something that we aligned on and they don't give me a straightforward answer and they kind of skid over the question as to just get me to stop talking about it altogether that doesn't always sit super well with me and I enjoy working in a company that has a little bit more pay transparency so for me personally this is a point in time that I would say no I don't want to continue on in the interview process typically I'd thank them for the interview on the phone and then after the fact when they email me again for, to set up my next interview I would let them know that I'm moving in a different direction with my career search another way this could look is if they do give you their budget and it's not aligning with your salary expectations and they're letting you know what the top of their budget is so you could say I want $80,000 a year and they're saying we're so sorry the top of our budget is $75,000 a year what I'll do after the phone call is I'll search through the company a little bit more look into the manager kind of figure out what the team looks like figure out how interested I am in that job and if I'm only kind of lukewarm on it I'm not super interested typically I'll pass because if they're not gonna meet my salary expectations and I'm not so excited about the opportunity then I I'm not I'm not gonna say yes to that opportunity I'm gonna want to move on to something else that not only is gonna pay me more but is going to excite me as I mentioned before don't waste your time going through an entire interview process for four weeks knowing that they can't meet your expectations especially when you have a very specific number in mind that you know you deserve to get paid lastly there are also gonna be cases where you go through the entire interview process you get an offer and you're disappointed by it this can happen even after you express what your salary expectations are and they confirm that it's in the budget this has happened to me before and it was such a bummer I went through the entire interview process super excited because they let me know that my salary expectations were in alignment with where they were at and then they lowballed me ten thousand dollars it was again such a bummer and in this circumstance I tried to negotiate not a lot of movement happened and I was much earlier on in my career so I did say yes to the job but now if this were to happen to me I would walk away and the reason for that is because again there's a certain level of pay transparency that I expect from a company up front during an interview process and it doesn't really sit well with me when there's kind of this like deceptive bait-and-switch process after you've spent so much time and effort going through this interview process and I think sometimes companies think that once we've spent all this time interviewing with them meeting all their people we're gonna be so excited about the opportunity that will overlook the salary and I don't want you to get caught in that trap because again you deserve to get paid what you're worth and don't let companies make you think that you don't and that company culture is a part of your total compensation package because I've been read that line before and at the end of the day what is a part of total compensation are your benefits is your compensation is a bonus any commissions so many different parts of pay and for me at least personally I don't think uh, company culture counts as one of those things 
Company culture is not gonna pay my bills and it's not gonna pay your bills either. So we've made it through the end of all five tips that I used and applied to my job search in order to increase my salary by $50,000 in one year. Again, these tips can be applied to you in your job search. They're not specific to a specific job or a specific industry. They can be applied across the board regardless of what you're interviewing for. What I really want you to take away from this video is that you deserve to be paid what you're worth. Definitely put in the time and the effort to research your job, to research your industry, and figure out what the pay ranges are for those positions. And when a company tries to convince you that you should be paid a lot less then you know you should be paid because you've done the research, don't take that job. There are an abundance of jobs out there. There are an abundance of opportunities out there for you. And you can be picky with where you decide to invest your time and your effort. And job searching is a long process. Um, in one circumstance, it took me over a year to find a job that fit for me. But the whole point of changing from one job to another job is to find yourself in a better financial place and a better company culture and just a better environment overall. So make sure that you're holding out for those opportunities that really align with what you're looking for. The last thing that I really want to talk about before we sign out is the privilege in being able to be picky about picking a job. I know that this isn't always an option for everybody. And so I, at the end of the day, want you to do what's best for you and definitely push to make sure that an employer is paying you what you're worth, but also know that it's okay to accept a job when they don't meet your salary expectations and you negotiate and they still can't meet them. You just need to do at the end of the day what is best for you and that's what's most important. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. If you liked this content, hit the thumbs thumbs up button. I would love to see that you liked this. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments box and make sure to subscribe. Thank you. Bye.